Recent census data is shedding new light on the state of poverty in America. The poverty rate between 2018 and 2022 fell to 12.5 percent. That's two points lower than the five-year period before. Both numbers are lower than the 2022 child poverty rate. That's 16.3 percent, higher than the rates for seniors and adults age 18 to 64. Here to discuss these numbers with us is Alan Barubi. He's vice president and director of Brookings Metro and co-author of the book, Confronting Suburban Poverty in America. Thank you for being with us. Help us understand those numbers. Put them into context for us. Sure. Uh, as, you, as you noted, John, for about uh, one in eight Americans today who live below the poverty line. That's actually in 2022, about the same as it was before the pandemic in 2019. But as your statistics noted, down from about 14% in the early 2010s in the wake of the financial crisis and the Great Recession. Uh, my colleagues and I have been tracking where poor Americans live and how that's changing. And there are about 15 million of, of the 40 million Americans who live below the poverty line who reside in the suburbs of our major metropolitan areas. And indeed, that's, that's well more than the 11 million for Americans who live in big cities or the 7 million who live in rural areas. The suburban poor population is expanding faster, about three times as fast in, as in big cities. So uh, even though I think there's a, uh, in the popular imagination in America, poverty is something that's concentrated in distressed inner city areas or rural areas, the fact of the matter is that the majority of low-income Americans these days are living in communities where the majority of Americans live, uh, which are suburbs. Yeah, so help us understand that, Alan. Um, why did that come to be, and why is that, uh, why is that area of, of the poverty picture growing? Yeah, I mean, I think in, in a lot of ways, uh, poverty in America is a reflection of uh, of the economy and certain segments of the economy. So it's uh, it's related to the condition of the labor market, how available work is. Um, but uh, in fact, you know, jobs in industries like hospitality, retail, jobs that tend to pay low wages mm -hmm. or don't uh, offer reliable hours, uh, jobs that often leave families at um, or below the poverty line are more and more suburban jobs. And so I think it's not surprising that the people who hold those jobs uh, are suburban residents. And many of our suburbs were built in the post-war period and housing is becoming more affordable there too. So I think it's just uh, the, the growth of poverty in suburbs is a reflection of how America has grown as well. And that's a crucial point. A, a lot of people in poverty, when you're talking about the misconceptions about poverty, a lot of the people in poverty are working. Yeah, indeed. Uh, there are estimates that indicate as many as half of all uh, poor adults have some work income over the course of the year. And it might be unsteady and it might not yeah. be all year long, but they're part of the labor market. So it really matters the condition of the labor market uh, as a tool for, for poverty alleviation, but also it's what those jobs pay and how available are supports like child care or transportation or health insurance that enable people to get and keep a job as well. And the, now looking at the picture going forward, our colleague Meg Oliver has been reporting this week on the post-COVID learning loss and school attendance. And I saw some statistics that showed that in terms of those students who are really missing school, the most, uh, the biggest attendance problems tend to be in the high poverty parts of the country. So as you look forward at the poverty picture and the contributors to poverty, are you concerned about the COVID period and how kids who aren't learning now are, you know, may very well end up in poverty later? Well, certainly. I mean, the, the, I think the biggest determinant of uh, one's income later in life and one's ability to, to, to get a good paying job and to stay uh, not only above the poverty line, but to uh, attain a middle class lifestyle is education and completing as much education as possible. We've already seen that the impacts of the pandemic on learning were greater for low income students than others. Uh, urban school districts, you know, for all their challenges, I think they tend to have a lot more practice in serving the needs of low-income students and low-income schools. But a lot of suburban districts are really quite new to this. They got a lot of pandemic aid from the federal government to help address the learning loss that their low-income students are seeing, but they haven't yet developed the staff or the practices to meet the needs of those students inside and outside the classroom. And so it's just being aware of that, 
learning from their big city neighbors and, and undertaking that process and knowing this, this is a problem that's going to be with them for some time and they need to invest in the well-being of all their kids. And then briefly, if it's possible, Alan, we're in a presidential cycle. Is there a question presidents should be asked about poverty? They don't talk about it much. Yeah, you're exactly right. Poverty is not really an issue that either Democrats or Republicans tend to campaign on explicitly. I think one exception might be the, the child tax credit. The federal government boosted that significantly in the pandemic. So you might hear uh, the Biden administration and, and candidate Biden talk about trying to extend that. Didn't get a lot of unanimity in the party nor support for Republicans. But it's something that uh, is really important for keeping folks above the poverty line and helping kids to succeed in school. Being poor is a detriment to one's ability to, to learn and absorb new information. I think it's going to be a key issue. Alan Barubi, Vice President and Director of Brookings Metro, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, John.